Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. The servers are currently overwhelmed with the dual loads of the Invictus launch week and the free fly event, but before that I was able to get in some time and footage with the Mirai Fury, so here are some first views about it. The Mirai lives up to all of its promised hype of being really small and really nimble, but there is a but to that, and it's a pretty big but, and I'll get to that in just a second. But the first thing everybody really wants to know is how many of these can you cram into a ship like a C2? And the answer is more than I expected. A lot more. I only had two to play with, but by placing them side by side and end to end, stepping them along, I came to the conclusion that with very careful placement, you could fit four across and four forward or backward for a total of 16 in just the wide part of the C2's cargo hold. Which brings us to the narrower part of the cargo hold, and the narrower part of the cargo hold can't quite fit three across, but it can hold one facing forward and another sideways next to it. So it looks like the narrow part of the hold can fit five, two facing forward and backwards, and three facing sideways. While I was repositioning one of the ships to verify this, something not that unexpected happened. I touched the strafe just a little too hard and bumped the other craft. And bam, the starboard wing came off the other craft. No problem, I thought, I'll just go get it repaired. And that is when I came up with an unpleasant discovery. The two lower pivoting engines could keep the Fury hovering, but any other movement, sideways, forwards, backward, pitch, yaw, roll, was uncontrollable. Everything is so reliant on these four pivoting engines and thrusters on these arms that if you lose one, and as I found it's really easy to lose one, then the ship becomes utterly unflyable. And that is even the best case. Later on, in a separate incident, I struck the roof of the C2, bounced off the floor, and wound up losing one of the lower wings. And with that, just maintaining hover was impossible, uncontrollable, and disastrous. And again, these weren't combat hits. These were low-speed loading collisions. So for those of you worried about the Fury being overpowered or heading for a nerf, this may be the counter-argument. The Fury makes previously named glass hammer ships seem positively tank-like by comparison. The arms have few structural points, and you can't afford to lose any of them or your ship is as good as done for. It's going to be a tough ship to hit for sure, but you're only going to have to do it once. And that is why I don't think actually packing 20 of them in a C2 is actually such a good idea. The thought that you will have 21 pilots so precisely skilled that none of them is going to have a mishap while loading or more likely when urgently deploying in combat is unlikely. In fact, the Caterpillar is more likely going to be the pocket carrier ship of choice. The fact that the individual bays make flight deck mishaps less likely and less costly, plus the greater number of doors, makes the loading and unloading much easier. The days of the legendary Cracker Pillar are here. As for using them in conjunction with the C2, I'm more inclined to head in the direction of putting just one in a corner to use for counterattack or fighting escape if my ship is disabled, while losing very little of my cargo capacity. I'm also seeing a lot of potential for using a handful of these in the forward section of an A2 bomber to act as advanced scouts to distract and disable air defenses before arriving with the big boom and possibly also is combining a small number of them along with a Tonk or Spartan in an M2. The M2 has tons of downward-facing firepower to provide air support to the Tonk, but both the Tonk and the A2 are vulnerable from above, so the squad of Furies protecting the space above could complete the tactical picture. The Carrick represents an interesting choice, since you can apparently put two of the in the Pisces Bay and two in the Vehicle Bay, but honestly, if it was my Carrick, I would prefer the operational flexibility of the Pisces and have fewer of the Fury. And then there is the general utility of buying the Fury as an LTI token. If you're not familiar with that concept, you buy the Fury with new money and get the lifetime insurance. You then upgrade the Fury to the ship you really want, and you get lifetime insurance on that other ship. It's a long-time tactic. So at $50 new money with LTI, do I think that it's worth it? Well, as an LTI token, it doesn't matter. But as a ship, it has its uses. But I wouldn't be automatically melt your Merlin, Arrow, or Gladius. This is a ship for when a small footprint is essential. But elsewhere, the ease at which it can be disabled by knocking out one of its wings is a real downside. As a result, I don't see it dominating the PvP the way some are worried that it might. And if it does, it will only be until it gets nerfed. 
Now for an update on our giveaways. First, we have the 10,000, now 12,000 subscriber thank you giveaway for the LTI Hull C, the colossal cargo container carrying craft to be given away when this C goes live, now on the roadmap for 3.20. And the big annual IAE ship giveaway for the winner's choice of the Galaxy Complete, the massive modular mining moving medical machine, or the Bainu Big Box Bargain Bazaar, known as the Merchantman. One entry per video for both giveaways. Just be a member and be entered automatically. Otherwise, just be a subscriber and comment somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is a ship that I thought will be the most popular starting point for a pocket carrier. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.